Bridgerton gets therapized. Colin and Penelope, oh my gosh, it's happening, you guys. Oh, the drama, it's juicy and delight. Okay, so it's season three, if you've not been following the show, uh, it's Regency era England, and Colin Bridgerton and uh, his, his best friend Penelope, she has an unrequited crush on him, she has, she's carried a torch for him for three seasons, uh, and at the end of season two she overheard him talking to his bachelor buddies, because they were giving him grief about being, you know, close friends with her, and he said, no, I would never... I would never court her. I'm not interested in her, and I, I could never be interested in her. Penelope <laughs> Featherings, the way you were dancing with her looked rather interesting. Huh? You're courting the girl, Bridget. Uh, are you mad? I would never dream of courting Penelope Featherington. Not in your wildest fantasies, Fife. And her hearing that was just devastating. Uh, and so now he's back from his European travels, and of course, he's jacked now. This is what happens when you become the romantic lead of a season. You go from being an average looking Joe to, okay, in between seasons you gotta hit the protein shakes and the weights now because you're it. Hit the tanning beds, and he did. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Bridgerton. Do you not need a chaperone? Spinsters do not need chaperones. <laughs> you are not a spinster. I am in my third year on the marriage mark with no prospects to show for it. What would you call that? Something wrong. Pen. Between us, I mean. I wrote to you summer, as I always do, and why well, you did not respond. Admittedly, very few did, but if you are going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. You miss me. You miss me, but you had never caught me, is that correct? Pen, I... I have heard you at my mama's ball last season, telling everyone how you would never, ever caught Penelope Featherington. Yes, I Perhaps we should talk about this somewhere more private. Because I embarrass you. Of course you never caught me. I am the laughing stock of the town even when I changed my entire wardrobe. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. So here's what I'm loving about Penelope this season. She is so over it. <laughs> She's over being mistreated. She's over being overlooked. She's over not having a voice and just doing, I mean, of course she has a voice as, spoiler, Lady Whistledown, the gossip columnist whose identity is secret and nobody suspects that it's her. But in face-to-face -face interactions, she has been demure and she has been meek and she has been walked on. And at this point, she's just kind of had it. And she's standing up for herself, especially to Colin. Because Colin was her rock. As, as a friend, as someone she could talk to, as someone she could laugh with, as someone she could bounce ideas with, in whose, in whose companionship she could count on, even if it wasn't romantic. And for him to say what he said, to be so dismissive of her, is so unlike him. And this is, I mean, this happens in TV shows and movies and novels, but also in real life. Sometimes we say things that we don't truly mean because we want to fit in. Sometimes we say things that we don't truly mean because we want people not to tease us. And sometimes we are ashamed of the company we keep, not because the company we keep is shameful, but because we don't have the confidence to stand up for, no, I love this person and I want them in my life. And I love that she holds him accountable. And for those who know, I have an accountability kink. To Colin's credit, he comes back and he owns it. I'm not the man I was last season. And I'm most certainly not ashamed of you, Penn. The opposite is true, in fact. I seek you out at every social assembly because I know you will lift my spirits and make me see the world in ways I could not have imagined. You are clever and warm and... I am proud to call you my very good friend. It has been vexing. Watching you walk back into society with such ease. But every year, I pray, I might finally feel that way amidst the marriage mart and that comfort never materializes. Well, if a husband is what you see, let me help you. Help me how? I was in 17 cities this summer. And what I have learned is that charm can be taught. Colin, I cannot have you with me whispering into my ear in every ballroom. <laughs> Need that. We will have lessons, and you will quickly master them, I'm certain. So at this point, 
Bridgerton becomes kind of a spiritual sequel to Hitch, <laughs> or prequel to Hitch, where he's like, I'm going to give you lessons, right, on, on how to play the dating game, how to play the courtship game, the marriage mart, right? For those of you who aren't watching the show, it's about basically every year, the, the marriage season, the courtship season, that all of London is a flutter. This is the big time because a lot of times people spend the year at their country homes, but they come in every year to, to find matches, right, parents for their children. And Penelope is in her third year. And generally, if you make it past your first two years and you're not married, the, the scuttlebutt is that you're never going to get married. Penelope doesn't have the look, right, that everyone, that everyone holds up as the standard. She is who she is. And what a lot of people are saying online, and I agree with them, is that she's curvaceous and she's beautiful and she needs to own who she is with confidence because she's lovely. But she doesn't see it. She sees herself as, I don't, I don't fit in. Colin, when he says charm can be taught, he goes back later and he says, you don't need lessons, you don't need to be taught, you just need to learn how to be you. Because I know you and you're wonderful, but you get so nervous, right? You get so nervous and flustered in these social situations. Uh, so we're going to see what happens in one of their first lessons as he's trying basically to be Hitch and teach her how to date. I mentioned you were comfortable at Bridgerton House, so we're going to practice here. I was comfortable at Bridgerton House previously. We needed a place to be alone. Here, your maid can wait outside, and we can pretend we are at a ball. Have you gone mad? <laughs> Imagine it with me, Pen. The quartet is by the piano forte, preparing for the Parisian quadrille. Here, on the sofa, some mamas are debating the merit of the decoration. Across the room, gentlemen are asking young ladies to dance. <laughs> and here, we have the lemonade table, which is where we shall begin. So I grew up in a church environment, and I totally relate to, we've got a dance and there's lemonade. But the look on her face, so maybe you can relate to caring about somebody who doesn't feel the same way about you as you feel for them. And it's so hard to, to put it out there. It's so hard to say how you feel because it's a risk. And the risk is, what if I scare them off and now I lose this person in my life in any way, shape, or form? It's such a painful place to be in because you want more, but you also don't want to lose what you have. So how do we navigate that and how do we speak the truth? We'll get to that. Let's keep watching. Very well. Shall I pretend to flirt with the imaginary jealous? No, with the dashing suitor you just met by the refreshments. Me. You? I'm the perfect person to practice on. You don't have to be embarrassed, you know me. That's exactly why I will feel even more embarrassed, because I know you. <sighs> Forgive me, it is only... Deep inside, I know I can be clever and amusing, but... Somehow my character gets lost between my heart and my mouth, and I find myself saying the wrong thing, or more likely, nothing at all. Forget what is wrong or right. Imagine what you would want to say to me if I were a suitor, without concerning yourself with how I might receive it. That's good advice to a point. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. Forget what is wrong and what is right. Uh, not morally, but, you know, like, how is this going to be taken? I strongly believe, not just in romantic situations, but especially in romantic situations, but in life, you present as you. The more you present as somebody else, the more you present as what is expected, what is supposed to be, the less likely you are to find the people who will see you and accept you for who you are. And the reason she gets so nervous is because she's thinking who I am isn't good enough, who I am is someone that others would reject, who I am can't charm anybody, so how can I show up as somebody else? And Colin's advice is very good. Forget about right and wrong, and just speak your mind. Just speak who you are. Because the fact is, if a suitor, <laughs> right, if a suitor isn't interested in that or is chased off by that, they weren't the right fit for you anyway. Now when I say what he says is good advice to a point, you also generally, especially if you're romantically interested, it comes in layers, right? You don't just put it all out there all at once. 
there needs to be a, a sense, not just of mystery, but also of, of easing another person into it and not expecting them to meet you right where you are because sometimes you've got to work for it a little bit. And by work for it, I mean bide your time and be patient and reveal. Don't be false, but reveal who you are step by step by step. Slowly but surely climbing. And that's not what she's going to do. She's going to go a little too hard here. shine even brighter than you are kind. I, I might say something like that if you were a, a suitor. Mm. Well, that was uh, rather direct. Oh. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> this, I think, is the first time that Colin is really starting to see, oh, we're not just friends, at least in her eyes, right? That she sees me as, as a potential suitor. And to his credit, um, it confuses him, but it doesn't scare him. We get to this immediately iconic moment where Penelope has been publicly mocked, and people have, have shamed her and shamed Colin for being her friend, and she really is believing, I'm going to die alone, I'm never going to marry, I'm never going to find love. And so at that point, she's got nothing to lose, and it's a Hail Mary. Colin, could I ask you something? Of course. Penelope. It would not have to mean anything, and I would never expect anything from you because of it, but I am nearly on the shelf, and I have never been kissed, and I am not certain I ever will be. I could die tomorrow. You are not going to die tomorrow. But I could, and it would kill me. You would already be dead. I do not wish to die without ever having been kissed. So, rather bold request, and here's the thing, there's no way he can mistake this as, I'm just helping a friend. <laughs> She's saying, I've never been kissed, might as well be you who kisses me, but he knows. He's seen the looks, he's, and then she's breathing all heavy, like she's, she's really excited by this, like he knows. And he could say no, and he could say this isn't, oh boy. Thank you. Woo! My gosh. Okay. <laughs> Here's my two cents. Yes, it's a risk to put your heart out there. Yes, it's a risk to express how you feel and to take that chance. I believe it's generally a risk worth taking because if you're somebody who wants to find a romantic partnership, and your friend is somebody who wants to find a romantic partnership, then at some point, if you or they find it, then this opportunity will have passed you by. And if they're in a relationship, a serious relationship with somebody else, there's, gonna, there's probably gonna be different boundaries for what your friendship looks like. So might as well swing for the fences. And I'm not saying expect anything. I'm saying express and then let the chips fall where they do. And if, and you could do it in a very mature way of, look, I have feelings for you. Don't know if you have feelings for me. I'm putting it out there. And it doesn't need to be weird if it's, because feelings just are or aren't. And if they're not there for you, that's cool. I need, then I'll need a couple weeks to realign in my mind what I had hoped this would be. And I can be okay with us being friends. But I just wanted you to know to, to test the waters. I've had that conversation with people. People have had that conversation with me. All of those people still friends right because it's just it's just a conversation or in this case it's just a kiss what do you think of this dynamic between colin and penelope do you think it's healthy do you think it's it was a, a positive thing for her to ask to be kissed i don't read him as pity kissing her 
I read him as it's not pity, it's compassion. But what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I want to invite you to go back to the beginning with me, season one, Daphne and Simon's love story. I have a whole uh, gets therapized video on that. It's going to show up right here somewhere. Until next time, folks, keep shining. We need your light.